Oh, I got a question about interesting jobs that actors do. Now, you've done TV commercials. I mean, your first TV commercial for a hi-fi store, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was the beginning of my great career. Okay. Now, what exactly did you do and how thrilling for you at the time to do that? If, um, what did I have to do? I had to pop up in a speaker and uh, do a bit of Romeo and Juliet. And I think I did about millions and millions of takes. It was all like doing Fight Club, actually, because doing about 100 takes in, in, um, in about three hours. And at the end of it, uh, I thought, I'd never want to do this again. This is about the most stultifying, boring job. And I was in sort of this costume that was, it was a corset, you know, I started off where I was going to carry on um, until this film. Um, and it was the most uncomfortable and boring day of my life. But I did carry on. I don't know why, but anyway. Now the question, you, you mentioned the corset thing before, and it's been talked about a lot that you've done a lot of period pieces. Mm. But I'm just curious, have you ever been offered movies that you thought were totally just against the grain or inappropriate? I mean, have they ever said, you know, Helena Bonham Carter, Pamela Anderson, <laughs> one's British, one's busty, they're both babes. Have they ever <laughs> proposed anything yeah, like that? Yeah, one's busty and you don't know. Um, uh, there have been like, I guess what you call sort of genre films or thrillers or sort of like, I, no film with Pamela Anderson has really come my way. But uh, I just haven't done them because I just feel I can't get excited by them. So, uh, and this is sort of like my answer doing so like a massive, my, you know, a massive Hollywood picture, you know, which is really an art house picture, but masquerading as a big commercial film. So, uh, but it's sort of, it's, it's a, it has a rare intelligence in the writing and all the talent involved. Um, and certainly, as a part, you know, um, as a girlfriend part goes, it's a, it's a fantastic, it was a fantastically original part. So, and they're very hard to come by. Yeah, well, a question about the film. Uh, I was curious, what was the cigarette budget like uh, for this film? It was film? humongous. <laughs> it was more than my my salary practically. I know, particularly because you know Finch is sort of fond of doing you know multiple takes, you know, up to thirty or forty, you know. So, um, there's one particular shot of me smoking. The cam camera comes up in a slow-mo, and uh, we reshot that. I don't know many, how many times, uh, but it's, it's all about, he sort of got addicted to the sort of the aesthetic of this smoke um, shapes, and uh, it's a, an appalling and sort of probably rather useless, but um, and very damaging sort of skill to have, but I guess I sort of evolved a sort of smoking skill mm -hmm. through the six months during which I, uh, you know, uh, shot this part. Now, your hair is doing some really weird things in this film. Uh, your, your hairdresser. Now, what yeah. did you two talk about prior to... Uh, what did we do? <laughs> well, you know, to be absolutely honest, she she just... Um, she bought at the beginning of the shoot this puppy, a Maltese Terrier puppy, uh, Zoe, and uh, she used to do her hair every day, and uh, <clears throat> that was the inspiration for Marla's hairdo. So whatever Zoe was wearing, uh, it sort of crept onto my head. 